Hello everybody and welcome back to another New World video. I know, quite a surprise. It has been a long time, but we have a special New World Dev Update February 2024 to come out with uh, to, to talk about. Uh, I'm going to be creating content on the Dev Updates now. Again, uh, back from, I, I did it before and i thought i was going to you know do a lot of new world i do you know do some gameplay on the ptr uh yeah play some gameplay on the ptr and also react to the forge and turnums but i just wasn't into it enough to do that but i'm definitely always curious when they put out a dev update like an official full dev update and they talk about stuff that they're actually adding to the game and i get really excited about that because I do love this game. It has a special place in my heart. So we're going to be reacting to this video. Let's go. Everyone, welcome to the season five dev update. I'm here with the whole crew. I have Scott who always waves out of turn. So we'll do him first. We have Davey, Tony, Dan, Chad, and Zach. And we have a lot to share. Uh, we were supposed to have a few more people, but thanks to the apocalyptic California rainstorm to give you a hint on when we're filming this, they will not be able to make it. Also, our printers don't work, so some people may be looking at their phones. Um, but before we get in with, uh, with all of the goodies, I did want to share uh, some news. I, I know we had promised a roadmap in May, and unfortunately, we are not going to be able to share that until June. Um, we take our commitments serious, but we've got some new information on our side that's just going to mean we can't share it. Uh, we are still super excited about it, and hopefully that... Hopefully you can all be patient and understand it's just going to be a couple weeks behind where we had planned on sharing. Hopefully the new information is not anything like layoffs or things like that. That is the opposite of what this, uh, the New World team needs, right? Because they have, they seriously do have something special with this game. Almost everybody who has ever even tried it has said that much at least. Um, and it just, you know, it, it needs work and the reality is it's been out for two years and it still needs work okay and a year from now it'll probably still need work but let's be honest what game doesn't need work right think of any game well okay there are definitely games that you could say don't need work right they're certified hood classics right but the reality of a live service game is that you need to just keep working and keep moving towards um a better product uh that's that's the reality, and and I'm I'm happy that they're doing that. I am not butt hurt about this. I mean, it sucks, right? But I'm not butt hurt about it. A few weeks, like a month or less, of a difference between when we were getting the roadmap before and now, that is perfectly fine, right? Time flies. That's life. We're almost in March. <laughs> like, well, like, we're gonna get there. All right. I'm excited to see the roadmap when it comes out, and I'll probably do a reaction to that and talk about it. And also the, the dev update that comes out with it, for sure, where they talk about the stuff on the roadmap, get in, into specifics and things like that. So, uh, Outside of that, we have some really good news. By the time you see this video, the Advanced Group Finder should have launched, which we're all really excited about. Um, I haven't played it in live yet. It actually launches tomorrow morning. But uh, as someone who plays on a lower pop server, <laughs> Isabella, I think it's going to be a game changer. That is awesome. That is amazing news. Because right now with the technology that they have for their servers, 2.5K is where, they at, where they're at with the server max size. And obviously, especially in the downtrodden um, seasons of the game, uh, when things aren't as popular, things aren't as booming like after a... Uh, like after the expansions or things like that or the massive updates. Right, especially when when those times are around, less than two thousand five hundred people are online, um, and the reality is that the game needed a group finder, and now that there is one, that is really really good. All right. And there's still the way of the the classic way of getting a group into a game. You can also like create a group, and everyone can see it. And also, you can just go to the dungeon with your boys in a party and get in. You know, it basically has the dubs of a group finder and the the classic way of getting into dungeons all right well let's start talking about all the great stuff coming in season five we're going to start with zach who's going to take us through the winter runeforge trial 
Yeah, so basing offer we have with the hatchery, it's going to be a 10 person trial with some fodder and some boss encounters. People really liked the hatchery, nice by the way. Ancient, and I also played it in PvP. With e the icy coat on it. And you're going to be running. Sorry, I should just pause. Um, Everyone, uh, well, not everyone. I'm sure not everyone. A lot of people really liked the hatchery. Most people I saw talk about the hatchery, uh, the 10 man mini raid, really liked it. Um, and I did too. I played it on PBB, or P B E P B E, and it was really fun. Running through there, doing some. And this one looks stuff, cool. Puzzles, and you'll have some cool rewards: dark matter, new artifact, twice a week for bonus rewards. You can play it as many times you well, as you want a week, though. Well, you mentioned bosses. Be cool if you could talk a little more about those. I'll take that. Sure. Uh, so, uh, in this 10-person raid, uh, players will be revisiting uh, the Ophidian Construct as well as the uh, Ice Guardian. Uh, so, players have probably already uh, played these in their kind of their solo uh, trial incarnation. Uh, but they were actually designed and developed as 10-person uh, uh, raid bosses. So, uh, players will now be seeing them in their full glory, their full power. Uh, that is really cool. Multiple bosses. I don't. I think the other one had two bosses. This one sounds like it has like two or uh, three. Difficulty wise, uh, we want to be a little bit more uh, pug friendly, so uh, so it won't be quite as hard as like a, a sandworm, uh, but definitely still on the challenging side. The uh... well, the sandworm is insanely difficult. They they said that that was going to be the peak of PVE content, like the the peak of difficulty in PVE. That shit was difficult. I've still to this day never completed one. I did it on stream even multiple multiple runs with multiple groups and sometimes even not on stream um i have a whole video of me doing the sandworm on the P pbe and i i never defeated it i was never there for the defeat um it took people like a week to get the defeat down even on the pbe uh, the ophidian construct definitely a challenge of positioning uh making sure to pull apart those uh those constructs as they're splitting and fracturing and then uh, that's the pretty cool. Ice Guardian, uh, more challenges with the the rune puzzle as well as uh, uh, positioning with the uh, the torches. Going to be really really important on that fight. Uh, should put a pretty good challenge in front of the players. Pretty cool. It's fun stuff. Um, and I heard someone mention artifacts. Tony, do you want to tell us a little bit about the new artifacts coming this season? Yeah. So for season five, uh, we've got a handful of new artifacts coming out. Uh, we've got some weapons, armor, and trinkets. Uh, I won't go into the details of, you know, all the uh, the different perks and whatnot. Just leave that for discovery. Uh, but personally, for me, a couple I'm excited about. Uh, we've got the uh, Gravity Gauntlets, uh, which is going to give you um, a, a stacking buff on your heavy attack. So every light attack, you get 3% additional damage, uh, up to 10 stacks for your next heavy. So if you can, like, pair that with some crits, you can do some really good damage. Uh, and then the other one is the Phoenix, which is a trinket. Uh, and that one is every 180 seconds. Uh, if you hit zero health and you're supposed to die, you'll gain two seconds of invulnerability. So anybody who may have played a while ago and used to enjoy that from Berserk on a hatchet, uh, it's there, there in, in an artifact form. So I'm really That is really cool. That is really cool. And I like the... Uh, yeah, it used to be on the hatchet. They had to remove it. It was just too broken. At least I'm 99% sure they removed it. It was uh, too broken. There's a pair of boots coming out that sort of encourage like the ambush uh, kind of gameplay combat mechanic where... You get a bonus damage uh, for a short period of time after you go into combat, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, like your openers become way more uh, impactful. I can see that being insane. Like you land an insane. So the arena starts. Imagine this, right? The arena starts. Both teams are running at people, and the guy with these boots lands his like first ability that sets up his combo, and he just one shots your healer. Like that. That can just happen now. Initiative roll, basically. But hey, if that healer has the boots, he actually lives, goes invulnerable, runs away for two seconds, and heals himself. That's crazy. I I love this game. I really do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I think the game really benefits off of having artifacts, right? They're in a <laughs> position where you can only have... So, they made it so that you can only have two artifacts equipped on your character. You can have one artifact weapon and... No, I think three, actually. Two or three. Um, maybe one artifact gear, one artifact weapon, and maybe one artifact for your jewelry. 
Um, so either way, but this game really benefits from having a lot of different artifacts because a lot of different perks, a lot of different play styles. Artifacts literally just like they just build play styles. They pull it right out of thin air, um, and that's really cool. Uh, and one thing I wanted to add is, you know, we're starting to add a lot of artifacts, and I know we've had a couple players complain or, or sort of mention, hey, uh, it's, sort of, it's sort of <laughs> one or two, one or two. Said, it's so. sort of limiting to only be able to sort of track and upgrade five at a time. Well, we have some good. Okay, yeah, it is three. It is three. So you can see it here it's sort of in the screenshot. Yes, he has one jewelry artifact, one weapon artifact, and one gear artifact. We'll just sort of track and upgrade five at a time. Well, we have some good news. In Season 5, we are increasing that to 10, so that will help players a lot. That's awesome. Uh, one last thing on the subject of artifacts. Uh, the, 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 the improved group finder that's coming out, this is kind of a late update, but the Lost Stopwatch, which gives a taunt ability, will work in the role select for signing up as a tank. Uh, that's late breaking update, but we were able to get that in. That's pretty cool. Thanks for the critical news update. <laughs> yeah, everybody can relax. It's okay now. We're good. Um, no, it is actually nice. Um, so one of the things we've been asked for a lot over the last year, I'm pretty excited. Well, I'll, I'm pretty excited to let Dave talk about is uh, the thing that used to be sitting up there in one of our videos. You want to run with this? Uh, yeah, I think you're talking about controller. I am talking about <laughs> controller. So season five finally brings a long-awaited uh, first step of controller support. I'm not really going to be yapping here. I think it's really good that they have controller support now, but I'm not a controller guy, so. Support in New Orleans. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is step one. We are mostly focused on core gameplay in this one. So uh, really just making sure all the sort of running around, navigating, combat, all that feels really good. Uh, we've added a couple of cool things with that uh, focus on core combat navigation. And, and number one is uh, some aim assist, uh, which will be active during PVE, uh, a target lock that you can use, uh, and also some refinements to the way navigation works on the controller. So that has been really our focus for this release. Uh, we also have implemented uh, you know, a virtual cursor that allow you to navigate around the various menus. You'll see a couple of the menus we've added sort of hints and shortcuts to already. More of those will be coming along uh, over the subsequent seasons. We'll be trying to update all the screens so that there's sort of quick ways to do some of the actions. Uh, the last thing I think some people may miss uh, in Season 5 is there is no remapping. There's a couple default uh, options you can choose from, but no remapping in Season 5. Uh, obviously, we are aware of that. We are going to bring it to uh, you later. It just wasn't ready for Season 5. I encourage people to play with the controller. It's, uh, it's game-changing. I mean, it feels so different, in a, in a, and it feels really good, especially if you're more of a controller type of player. I'm excited for it. That's really cool. All right. Well, another thing we've been that we have that we've been promising for a long time is the finalization of the one through sixty MSQ update. So MSQ two point three. Yes, we win. We won. Do we remember when the game came out? How? awful the msq was do we remember it is so much better now like all the things that i've experienced that they updated so much better and then even since the last time i played uh ever since the expansion right they i think they updated weavers Ben. they did they did a bunch of they did eating grove um and now they are finishing the last two areas of the game that needed uh, an MSQ update. And these are actually insanely good because I think he's, he's going to say Shattered Mountain and Ebon Scale Reach. And those are actually end game ish zones. Ebon Scale Reach, a little less so. I wish they made Ebon Scale like 60 plus uh, or 60 to 65 or something like that. But um, I think it's like 55. It goes to. Yeah, it goes to 55, but at least for Great Cleave, that's kind of where the Isabella storyline ends. That's like the end of the corruption part of the storyline and things like that. Um, and that is awesome. That's like what the whole MSQ is building up to is the whole thing at Shattered Mountain where you come face to face with Isabella and you've defeated Captain Thorpe back at level 45, and you've got Captain Thorpe's helm, 
um, and things like that. Yeah, this is like capping off. This is a this is a rework. This is an MSQ rework to an end game zone. So it actually affects players now. Um, a lot of people said like, oh, okay, well, I mean, I'm already level 60, so like a lot of these MSQ updates don't even affect me. This will actually affect you now. Three, which finishes the story. You want yep. to give some high levels on that? Yeah, just high level because there's going to be a, a full Forge in Eternum that details all this, so I don't want to spoil it. That's um, cool. Like Scott said, this is sort of the culmination of the MSQ 2.3 pass all the way through. Uh, and this one, we focused on Evan Scale Reach and Shattered Mountain, uh, sort of bringing the rest of the story in. Uh, it brings with it two new soul trials, which are going to be super fun. It brings in a host of new IGCs. That's uh, Isabella right there. Of the new, like, sort of painterly cinematics. Uh, so it's great. And I think most importantly of all, for the solo players. I love I love the way that their art in the, in the cinematics are done. I like, I really love the stylized art one. And that seems like a lot of what we're going to be getting here, too. Uh, you will now be able to do the whole story uh, of that's, the Isabella That's also Isabella. All the, way the whole story of the Isabella alt arc. Without having to do an expedition. You can do it all solo. So pretty exciting stuff. I think the Isabella fight is a blast. I think uh, you know, Chad and his team have done a great job making that. It's like it's really come together. It's a, it's a cool final stamp on that story. From, from hardcore story to cooking. <laughs> um, but we have made some changes to cooking, so why don't you take us through those, Tony? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we do have a lot of changes to uh, cooking uh, coming up here in the future. I'm not going to go into too many details because we're going to have a Forge in the Turnum coming out shortly after this video, as well as some more fun cooking shenanigans uh, in the future after that. But the high level of it is we wanted to take a look at the trade skill. Now that we have uh, a better understanding of what players are chasing, what players are making, what players are cooking, um, there was a lot Let of them cook in the cooking trade skill, and we really wanted to pair that back and really focus on what players were using. So we cut back significantly on the recipes. Uh, we did tuning on uh, experience curves as well, making it easier and more fluid to level, uh, and just a, a whole lot of changes. Uh, it really slims down the crafting menus, which helps with performance. Uh, just all in all, I think the changes make it feel a lot more focused, I guess, if you will. Uh, and so really looking forward to some of the changes we have for cooking uh, and other things as we simplify those as well. Yeah, I think the exciting thing is to see the response to this. And then if we like it, start looking at other trade skills and repeating the pattern. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good point. You know, the, the, the feedback that we get from this is going to influence and then, you know, motivate how we approach other trade skills uh, as we do these in the future. And, and so what can players expect in terms of like the things that they've already cooked mm -hmm. or like their existing items? Like how? Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. No, that's a great point. Yeah, so let's say, um, so I can, I'll talk to split staff, right? And so maybe you oh. have uh, focus strength food uh, for whatever reason. And when this patch comes out, uh, what we're going to be doing is whatever the main stat is for the split stat foods, <clears throat> you're going to be getting the same tier as that as a primary stat. That is so good, guys. I've just kind of, I've, I've just been letting them talk. Uh, goofy. Pretty, pretty goofy reaction of me. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this, this is insanely good, right? I think there are so many completely worthless, useless recipes that I'm sure not even 0.1% of the player base uses in New World. And I am glad that they have decided, okay, they're just gone. Why, like, why do we need this much clutter? It's like, oh my god, I found a new recipe. You look at it, and it's just like the, the 800,000th split stat food in the game. And it's like, when am I ever going to use this? It's like, oh, if you eat this uh, PP kebab, uh, you'll get uh, four intelligence and six strength. And it's like, when the, like, when am I going to use this? I'd rather just, is it just everyone just gets the, uh, the single stat food and then uses their attribute points from levels and stuff to put into the other stuff to put into whatever their secondary is, right? Uh, that's just a better way of doing it, right? It, it just in general. So I'm glad that those are just being removed straight up. I think that that's just worthless. Let's be honest, that's just worthless to have in the game. So, if you had so really good job on them. I mean, that's not like a crazy change, but I, I actually really like changes like that where it's like, yeah, we just removed all this useless crap. Focus strength at tier four. You're just going to have a tier four focus food. 
and that'll go all the way through. And it does it for uh, crafting foods, gathering foods, because again, a lot of the simplifications, uh, there's just one tier for crafting and gathering now as well. We lower the re level requirement to use those. Uh, and again, it just should feel like a, a much more polished experience. That's awesome. That's cool too. Removing level requirements is, is nice too. Did they say they're, did he say they removed level requirements for like all the food? A lot of the simplifications, uh, there's just one tier for crafting and gathering now as well. We lower the level. So what? <clears throat> You're going to be getting the same tier as that as a primary stat. So if you had focus strength at tier four, you're just gonna have a tier four focus food. Okay, and yeah, that makes sense. All the way through. And it does it for uh, crafting foods, gathering foods, because again, a lot of the simplifications, uh, there's just one tier for crafting and gathering now as well. We lower the re level requirement to use those. Uh, and again, it just should feel like a-, a Oh, thank God. Yeah, all the ones that's like, oh, plus, Okay, this is, I don't remember the exact uh, numbers of all of them, but it's like, uh, plus, I could get plus 1,000 luck or whatever to my logging. And then it's like, okay, what does this food do? Plus 1,200 luck to my logging. And it's basically just like different tiers of foods that do the same exact thing. That just give you a little more that you like need to have an increased level for. Now there's one tier, right? One tier. So there's going to be like one. It's probably hopefully going to be the one with the max benefit. And then they lowered the level requirement to use it. So that is really cool. That is awesome. That is just also removing a ton of useless garbage from the game. More polished experience. That's awesome. Uh, we have a change coming to OPR, Dan, that you want to talk about? Yeah, uh, I think all this, like, all these changes really work well together because with the rework of the full game now being out, the, the full MSQ rework to every zone in the game being out, you actually level up with the quest. Like, you can, you can legitimately level up much faster in New World nowadays than you could before in terms of, like, if you're not uber sweating it, doing, like, the most absolute... Like you level up throughout the game just by doing the quests, and then everything else is just extra. Back in the day, you would reach a point where you can't do the next quest because you have to level up like four times. And it's like, okay, what do I do for four level? Like, how do I get four levels? You chop trees. No choice. You want to do that next quest? You get chopping, buddy. Chop, chop. And it's like, okay. But like in reality, the XP gains are a lot higher now on the MSQ and the MSQ flows a lot better now. So it takes a lot less time to do and it's less annoying. And there's mounts. So you just generally move across the world faster. So the leveling experience is 10 times better and it's also 10 times faster. Uh, not exactly, but you guys get the point. So you're you're zooming past if you're like grinding the game, which it, an MMO is usually you know, grinders play MMOs, right? People who who really like video games, who play them a lot. Those are the kind of people that play MMOs. Uh, and the reality is they're just grinding most of the time, most of them, uh, and they're zooming through the levels. So having all these different things or all these different level breakpoints, it's like, okay, I can like make this food at level 12 but like I can just make this one at like level 22 and I can get from level 12 to 22 and let's be realistic, like two and a half hours or less. If I'm like really zooming, uh, if I got money on my mind, you know, so the fact that they've really expedited the leveling process and made it a lot cleaner makes it so that different level breakpoints of like, foods and stuff that are just the same thing as higher things but with lower value have a lot less of a place in the game because you're going to zoom past the the care for those pretty quickly because you're just going to want to get the higher tier thing and you're going to be able to reach the higher tier thing a lot quicker 
some some of us glimpsed this in a, in a PTR a few PTRs back, but uh, we're very excited that we um, we've done some we, we've we've got this ready to go out, and mounts are now allowed in OPR starting in season five. Mounts now being allowed in OPR is really really cool for the boat. It takes it from you know it's a big map. So it basically makes it feel like much less of a walking simulator and much more of a, you know, you respawn, you hop on your horse, and you get back in that fight, all right? And, and that's what it's all about. You get back in the PvP, you get back in the action, you have fun. Uh, I think that's just generally, that's just overall a good change. And I'm glad, it. I'm actually glad that it took them a while to implement this and they wanted to see how mounts interacted with open world PvP first and made sure that everything is really good. Because if they had massive issues with like, they had any kind of issues with like the mounts not working properly when you're dismounted or not dismounting when you're getting hit, any kind of bug like that. And then whenever they release mounts, they instantly shipped. You can play it in OPR. OPR is now ruined until you can fix that. Or then you have to go back and remove it afterwards, which is much worse after you've already added it, right? So taking your time, making sure a system works well, and then building on it is just, that, I mean, they are learning from their past mistakes, let's be honest, because like they, they would have maybe not done this back in the day, <laughs> like back when the game first released, okay? <clears throat> that is going to be awesome. I cannot wait. Feels... 20 people riding their mounts across it's gonna be yeah. awesome it's gonna be cool it feels like a whole new mode it's really good oh yeah that's great um so a while ago we i think it was quite a while ago we <clears throat> talked about that we were looking at overhauling our combat system um and i think we're pretty much getting pretty close to rolling that out dave do you want to share some beats yeah so basically we're redoing the sort of core scripting system which uh drives all the animation and combat logic in our game this is uh, insanely this is good initiative obviously <clears throat> uh, you know it's all combat all navigation uh, and it's all being redone in this new system uh, the new system uh, there's actually going to be a blog by Kevin uh, who's the architect who did all this that that sort of dives deep into how it works because I don't understand it all but the key thing to understand is that it is now going to be uh, basically natively compiled C++ code. So that makes it way, way faster, uh, which is going to be great, especially in sort of like... Yeah, I mean, just having your inputs registered really fast in an action combat game that has a lot of PvP in it is really, really good. Having as little uh, desync as possible, making it look like everything that touches Everything that you do that touches their character actually registers in the game. Every CC that you hit onto their character actually registers into the game and they get CC'd properly if you aim it correctly. That is really good. Obviously, that is important. That is how it should work. So I'm really happy that they've completely reworked their entire um, scripting for for combat in new world and i'm really happy I, I really hope that they do it for more things like just movement in general so that maybe our horses can stop going bonanza when they're walking over a rock you know what i mean like like you guys know what i mean like when you're jumping over something and like your character like it looks like they you actually jump over it and then you're like on top of the rock but then your character like glitches like back and then you like do the climbing animation over the rock things like that happen m so much in this game or where you're like basically lagging it looks like you're glitching into a tree root just by trying to like walk around it or walk over it or something i like as many things that they can remove like that as possible and just make the game smoother overall in terms of movement combat whatever that is a massive W. Very complex scenes like in war uh, or in chess runs, wherever there's a lot of des density, uh, this will really help out. Uh, but yeah, it is a major overhaul. Uh, all oh yeah, also they said that, um, I know that they, with overhauling this code, it is a lot less hard on the servers. So things where player density is high and and mob density whatever is high 
and usually like uh, all these different things are being registered all these different like shots are being registered um players using attacks you know putting in inputs other everyone putting in inputs things interacting with each other when they're hitting other things all that being completely rewritten in a 10 times better way is going to cause such amazing performance enhancing enhancements for the overall server health of the game where player density is high and i am not lying this is going to at least if it works in the way that they are saying this is going to allow them to increase the server cap of the servers again which is always really good all of our actions all of our abilities everything has changed so you know there is a chance that some things may be slightly different hopefully for the better uh, but please let us know if you notice anything playing uh, that you think is less good uh, than it was previously, let us know. Uh, but yeah, the, the goals here are one, really help improvement uh, in performance. And second... Also, I hope this prevents your character being perma-staggered by enemies. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing that out there. I, I hope just in general they find a way to prevent that. Uh, this because that is really a annoying buggable system because it's natively compiled we can set in breakpoints we can check uh, variables all sorts of things easily debuggable that's good debug so this <laughs> the engineer because sometimes they will straight up be stuck with bugs in the game that are game breaking like combat bugs for months for patches and they don't know how to fix it because they the code is so bad but now they've rewritten it and they're saying it's highly debuggable, very easy to get in with different switches, knobs, things to turn, things like that. That is really good. And this guy over here, this guy just said he's an engineer. I mean, he's clearly smiling his ass off. So. In the group uh, but what that means for you all, the players, is that it will be easier to fix bugs uh, and especially the desyncs, which are really hard to fix on our old uh, system. Will be There you go. It'll be easy to fix bugs, especially the desyncs, which were really hard to fix on our old system. Be much easier to fix. So, Holy uh, hell, guys! Look forward to improved performance. Is New World and, unironically uh, saved? Is this the is this the like best patch ever? Not in terms of content, but in terms of actually improving the overall feel quality of the game. Bug fixing in the future, but there might be that is a that that is a high chance. Introduce this in season. Five, where we're sort of ironing out all the kinks and let me just manage expectations like we got the base system in so your performance may not have a drastic improvement immediately yes it's going to enable us to understand and improve it over time in a much more dramatic way so day one you may not get a huge performance gain but it's going to give us data and the ability to go back and and, and make performance better it, and that's good that's good because i don't really plan on playing till like maybe season six Maybe like the summer season, maybe uh, maybe like season six, or maybe season seven or eight when the expansion comes out. I don't plan on playing for a bit. I just want to let them. I want to let them cook, in terms of just like improve, improve, improve. I come back, and it's like you know that meme like wow, like that, or like the anime girl goes wow, like that. That's gonna be me, right? And by the way, it will get better, but there's gonna be more leaps coming because of this framework. And, and there should be a noticeable um, decrease in like the, the memory footprint. Yeah, uh, well. especially on the server, right? Server and client. Yeah. There you go. There you go. It should be a dec. Wait, what did you say? What, what are his words exactly? And, and there should be a, a noticeable um, decrease in like the, the memory footprint. A noticeable decrease in the memory footprint on the server. That is what I was saying. So in high density player areas, there is significantly less strain on the server and and the code of the game so hey they should 100 percent be able to increase the server cap at least a little bit i pray for at least least at least bare minimum 3k server size from the 2500 that it is right now at, at least 3k server size uh with the next expansion right or even before that even if they want to do it before that if they're like wow this actually improves our server capacity we can do the server capacity now and that way it's already set um either way that is good that is good 
I I'm expecting 3K at least. They'll, they might release the higher server sizes with the expansion. That would make sense, but releasing it early would also make sense. Yeah. Uh, Not that you're going to actually reach those caps before the expansion comes out anyway, because I feel like it's really, really hard for you to, to generate enough hype to max out multiple servers until an expansion comes around. So that might be their logic. It's like, okay, well, we can add another another nice note that is good to look at onto our expansion uh under like the patch with our expansion in it so people will want to come back because like there's more people on their server but also they want to come back as the expansion you just one more thing bringing people back one more thing to generate hype for the expansion uh they can keep it for that since they don't really even need it until that that's fine by me that is honestly what i might do as a game dev but yeah especially on the server right server and client yeah so it's a big deal and uh you know, we, we, like Dave said, this would be a great one to give us feedback on. As, you know, remember, different doesn't mean bad, but figure out, like, help us un I, I understand what's bad, not just. Uh, All right, well, we're going to go back to Tony, who's going to tell us about some of. The my flavor in my circle is, is going out. Upcoming events in season five. Yeah, so we've got a couple of your old favorites returning. Uh, we're going to have Rabbit's Revenge coming back. Uh, where you'd be able to go ahead and, and kill your furry friends in order to get that coveted chest that everybody always goes after. That's messed and then, up. And uh, we also have uh, Springtide Bloom uh, coming around again uh, with uh, some revamp. They cut it off because he didn't get the chest off that rabbit. Rewards, so we're excited to see players dive into those <laughs> and, and, uh, and earn some cool stuff. All right, we're going to finish. The Springtime Bloom, to Springtime Bloom event is really cool. I did a lot of Midsummer event the one year. I might unironically come back just to play the Springtide Bloom event and then get some cool rewards on the game, like get the skins, and then stop playing the game again until the expansion. Then. But I might do the um the ten man raid. If I do if I do end up doing the ten man raid, I might actually I I'll probably stream it one if I play it. I think that's almost a guarantee. If I if I play New World, I will stream it. It's a very streamable game. It's an MMO. You're just sitting there, you're chilling, you're talking to chat, you're playing the MMO. That's what it's all about. MMOs are really, really good stream games. Um, but uh, plus, you're also doing like really long sessions, so that's another reason why it's a good stream game. But I might make a video about it too. Finish on a positive, hopefully. Uh, Davey has a surprise to share about a new quality of life feature that he's really built up. So I hope it lives up to it. I think it will uh, beyond just the artifact change, which you mentioned earlier, which is great, Joel. Uh, another piece of feedback we've gotten a lot is Magnify. Hey, this thing can be hard to manage in all my builds. I wish I had a little more control. Magnify is annoying because it's like the adaptive stats. It, it's like adaptive force in League. If you are running like two different stats in New World, and say you want to let... Say, okay. So say all your gear, right, has like strength. Right, like plus 32 strength or whatever. And then you put your points, your level up points into another thing. Right? It the magnify will automatically put the stats into whatever your highest thing is. Right? Uh even though you might want to it's supposed to be yeah, it's it's supposed to add points to whatever your highest thing is, but it's really hard to control what your highest thing is. If you have like, you know, when your gear is saying that's like giving you a specific stat, right? So you might want to be trying to hit a break point on like your second attribute, like your secondary attribute that you, you know, want to get to, you know, a break point to get a buff off of that on the tree. Uh, and no, it'll just slap it on your fucking strike. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, and, you know, we've gotten lots of different suggestions how to do it. In Season 5, we're going to be introducing a new QRL change where you can choose the attribute that all your Magnify applies to. Yeah, I think that's, <laughs> I think that's a really good move <laughs> so, to be able to pick the uh, attribute like that your Magnify goes like on to. Individually apply them all, which that's a really good change. We thought that was a little change. bit too strong, but here you can choose one attribute for all your Magnify. And that's exactly what they should do to add Adaptive Force in League, but, you know, that... I feel like any game that has like a way that you can like it gives you this which can give you either this or this you should be able to choose what it gives you points 
uh, and it should give you a little in bit any of game in any context builds, almost especially if you use magnify across multiple builds awesome all right well that's all we have today thanks for watching um, if you like what you saw and you want us to keep doing these like us follow us um, subscribe and all of that otherwise thank you so much and we will see you in a turn hey i thought the big surprise was going to be uh that we're lowering the cost of respec oh, what oh. happened one more QOL update that's super important. Uh, we've gotten lots of feedback on respecing, especially in our classical system. Hey, it costs too much. Well, guess what? The cost is being shattered. We got a huge <laughs> sale in season five. <laughs> the respec is now 50 coin. 50 coin? Woohoo! Beer, 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 beer. It's like a pack of gum. Come on. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thanks. See ya. <laughs> bye bye. I mean, obviously, that's a good change, too. That, that's a nice change. Um, just lower respect costs, especially in a game like New World where you're respecting often, especially if you're playing multiple different builds, especially when you're doing the level up experience. When you're leveling up in New World, right, because there's no classes, right, you can get a bow in like World of Warcraft, right? And it's like a green bow, and it's like the best bow you can find for a while. But in New World, and if you're a hunter, you're going to take that. That's a W. But the thing about New World is, when your weapons are basically your class, you can find a, like, bow that's good for a while, and then as you're further into your leveling journey, you're further into, um, you know, the story or whatever, you got, you got a few more levels on you, and then you find a Warhammer, or a, or a Battle Axe, or a Hatchet, any other weapon, literally in the entire game, a Fire Staff, that's like way better than that bow you got earlier. You're 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 gonna say to yourself, like there's a part of you that's gonna say to yourself, hey, this fire staff is really good. Maybe I'll just become a mage for a while. I'll try that play style out while I have this like good fire staff instead of just using this bow because I decided I'm gonna use this bow. You have the option to do that in New World, uh, and whenever respecking costs an arm and a leg, that is really painful to just keep doing. But if they're completely like shattering the cost of of respecking, especially in a game like New World, where you're respecting you're respecting all the time to do these different builds, these different weapons, things like that, that is insanely high QOL. That is a high value change right there that will affect pretty much the whole player base. So thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like it. Uh, if you dislike it, that was un hey, that's unfortunate. Uh, comment if you watch my New World videos. Um, now, that's that means I'm going to get no comments, unfortunately. But if you did make it to the end of this video, uh, please do me a favor and subscribe. Uh, most of the people who watch my videos, believe it or not, are not subscribed. Um, that is pretty much the story of every YouTuber. So I would like to maybe change that a little bit. You know, I'm not going to change it completely, but hey, put a little bit more in my favor. And, you know... If you, if you like this video, I'll be doing another one when the next dev update comes out. If you like Honkai Star Rail, well, I've got tons of reasons why you should subscribe. So just do it, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that is a demand. That's right. I demand it.